In this video we'll cover the first part of Unit 3, Life on Earth, from the National Five course, um, which will focus on ecosystems. So this part of the course is a lot to do with definitions, and it's a lot to do with definitions that you might have seen before in previous courses, um, or just from watching something um, straightforward like a David Attenborough programme. Um, so you'll need to know the meanings of a lot of the words in this, so I'm going to highlight the keywords that you'll need to know the definitions of. So the first one, which you might have gathered from the title of this, is ecosystems. So an ecosystem is what is known as all the communities in an area, and in a habitat, for example, which is where an organism lives, and then the non-living parts that they interact with. Now, those non-living parts are things like rivers, or mountains, or stones, or something that's just very basic, that's around about us all the time. Now, within that, you'll need to know what a community is. Now, you'll have heard the word community when, it, when you talk just generally in terms of local communities or a community centre but communities in terms of this subtopic or this part of the course refers to all the populations within an area okay now I'll define the populations in a minute but what I mean by communities is all the populations in an area so all the different organisms in an area so for example in this all the ladybirds all the frogs all the birds all the hawks all the lizards all the different named animals that you can think of all the acorns and all the um, holly bushes and all the daisies and all, the, all those things, all those different living organisms. Okay. Now, ladybirds would have a population, frogs would have a population, so would birds, etc, etc, which is what you need to know as well. So, populations are the members, all the members, of one species. Okay. Now, the difference between population and community is population is of one species, Whereas a community is all of the different species. Okay, all the different populations and all the different species. So when we talk about a population, we're talking about all of one single species. So all the ladybirds, a population of ladybirds, a population of humans, a population of bats, okay, a named species, all the populations of dogs even. Okay, and then what you'll need to know as well is what a definition of a species is. So a species is a group of similar looking organisms, okay, that will breed together to produce fertile offspring. Now fertile is a really important word. Fertile means that it can reproduce to make more of themselves. So for example, dogs, regardless of the different breeds of dogs, you can get a great Dane and a Chihuahua and mix them together, allow them to breed, and they will produce fertile offspring that can breed again. But, and hopefully you'll have watched this video, the ligers, right, if you get a lion and a tiger together and they breed and they make a baby liger, you can't get two ligers to breed together and make more ligers because those liger babies will be infertile because they've not come from the one species. Okay, so that shows you a lion and a tiger are two separate species. Okay, so an example of a species would be dogs. Okay, even though there's different breeds, they're all able to reproduce together. Okay, the same with cats. Right, and another definition you need to know is what's called biodiversity. So bio just means living. Diversity means variety. So in terms of definition then, biodiversity, if you just break it up, means the variety of living things in an area. Okay, so the more biodiverse an area is, the more variety, um, variety it has within it, the better it is really. Okay, if you just had one species living in an area, that's no use. Okay, you need to have a whole bunch of interlinked in communities and a whole bunch of interlinked populations. Right, so within that then you'll need to know about feeding relationships, okay, between these populations and between the um, communities in an ecosystem. So again, this might be revision that you already um, will remember from earlier on in your school years. So feeding relationships are, sh are shown in what's known as either a food chain or a food web. Now a food chain is a single stream um, of organisms connected. A food web is multiple interconnected food chains. So I'll show you examples of both of those in a moment. Now, in each of these food chain or food web, you'll have an arrow. Now, arrows very clearly show the direction of energy flow. Not just energy flow, but the direction where it's going, and that's really important. Okay, you can't just say energy flow. That would not be enough. You'd have to tell me it's the direction of it, because otherwise arrows are useless if they're going both ways. So what I've done is I've given you an example here of a food chain. Now, food chains will always start 
with a plant, okay, that will take energy from the sun. So it always begins with a plant. Okay, and in this example, that plant is a wheat plant. Now, the general name for a plant that's at the start of a food chain is a producer. Now, typically, they are green plants, and they're green because they contain chlorophyll, remember? So this would be a linked question they could ask you about Unit 1. Um, and they make their own foods by photosynthesis. Okay, so they would then produce their own food using that process of photosynthesis, which we'll learn about later in this topic. So try and think about linking this to Unit 2 and talking about palisade mesophyll cells and the fact there's lots of chloroplasts within them. There's links to specialised cells within this. Okay. Next then is the organism that eats a plant. Now generally, organisms that eat other things are not called producers now. These are called consumers. So all these things, because the green fly eats the wheat, the ladybirds eat the green fly, the frog eats the ladybird, the fox eats the frog, all of these are described as consumers. Okay, and it's because they eat other organisms. Now that organism can be made a plant or it can be an animal. It doesn't really matter. Okay, but because they're eating something else and gaining their energy from something else, they're described as a consumer. Okay. So the next example then that I'm going to cover is a green fly. Now this green fly here is a thing that eats other it eats plants, essentially. It doesn't eat other animals, it just eats plants. And therefore, this is called a herbivore. Okay, and it's because it eats plant material. Now, the next couple of examples that I'm going to show following on from that will be the ladybird, the, fo the frog and the fox. So these guys are not herbivores because they are not eating plant material. They're actually eating animal material. So the ladybird is eating the green fly. Okay, the frog is eating the ladybird and the fox is eating the frog. So all of these are not herbivores. They are carnivores because they eat other animals. Now, you might have heard of different phrases for these. Um, so, for example, you might have heard of predator and prey. So, this green fly has been eaten by the ladybird, and therefore it is also prey for that ladybird. Okay, prey basically means it is hunted and killed by another animal. Okay, so this person, or sorry, this green fly could be either a prey or it could be a herbivore, depending on what you're describing it. Okay, now these things here are carnivores. Now, this ladybird is a carnivore because it's eating another animal, it's eating the green fly, but it is also being eaten by the frog. So the ladybird could be described as prey because it is prey of the frog, but it is a predator to the green fly. So, carnivores can also be predators. Okay, because they hunt and kill other animals. Okay, but be aware that the predators could also be the prey as well. So that frog, while being a predator and eating the ladybird, is also the prey to the fox. Now, there's one phrase that I've not included yet, um, which is not applicable to this food chain, but will be applicable to the food web that I'm going to show you. So, the term omnivore you will have heard of, hopefully, as well. Omnivore basically means that it's an organism that eats both plant and animal material. Okay, so humans, for example, are omnivores. 
because we eat plants and we also eat other animals. Okay, so that just generally gives you an idea of what a food chain would look like and how to describe the members of a food chain. Now what I'm going to do now is show you a larger example, but this time of a food web. Now notice how there's multiple food chains in this. So for example, if you were asked for a food chain um, that contained three members, for example, you could use grass, or if you use three steps, for example, but four members. So you'd use grass, then the slug, then the thrush, then the hawk. That'd be one full food chain. Now you could also do the same thing and have grass, grasshopper, frog, hawk. That's one food chain. Grass, slug, frog, hawk is another food chain. So you can identify them separately or you can look at them as a whole. Now, you could be asked for um, examples from a food web of a producer. So in this example, these leaves and grass are the producers. You could ask, um, be asked for an example of a consumer. Anything that is not a producer, right, i.e. the leaves and the grass, are consumers. So all these above my fingers are consumers. You could be asked for a herbivore. So a grasshopper is a herbivore because it only eats plants, and so is a slug. Now you may have gone to the badger and said it's a herbivore, but it's actually not because the badger eats leaves and the badger also eats grasshoppers and frogs. So that badger is an example of an omnivore, like I was referring to before. Okay, so the badger is eating both plant animal and plant and animal material. Okay. So in an example in a question, they may ask you to describe the effect of removing an organism. So for example then, if the slug was removed, okay, there was a disease that wiped out slugs, you might be asked to explain the impact of that or describe the impact of that, that removal of that slug. So what you want to do is have a look at what that slug is eating and what is eating the slug. So if you have a look at the grass, for example, the grass is no longer being eaten by the slug. There's less things eating the grass. Okay, there's only the grasshoppers eating them now. So therefore that grass, the numbers might go up. Okay, now you might also say that the numbers might stay the same because the grasshopper can still eat the grass. That'd be equally as correct. Okay, so you have to describe the impact on the numbers of a named organism that's linked to that. So if the slug disappeared or the slug was killed off, grass numbers would likely drop because, or sorry, increase, because the slugs are no longer eating the grass. If you were asked to describe the impact on the thrush, now the thrush would usually eat the slug, but the thrush no longer has that slug to eat. Therefore, the numbers of that thrush would drop because they don't have the slug to eat anymore. They have less, right, in terms of food sources. They've only got that one food source in this food chain. You could be asked for the impact on the hawk. Now, if the slug has gone, the thrush numbers drop, therefore the hawk has less thrush to eat, so the hawk numbers might go down. But the hawk can also eat the frog, so the hawk numbers could stay the same because it might just eat more of the frog. Okay, so you can justify it in a number of ways. So to give you another example, if I say that the uh, badger was killed off, you could be asked to explain, or describe, sorry, and then explain the effect on frog numbers. Now that frog is no longer being eaten by the badger and therefore the numbers might go up. Okay, now you would further, you can further justify that by basically saying the grasshopper numbers would also go up because there would there be um, no badger to eat the grasshopper, but you could also see the grasshopper numbers stay the same because although the badger is no longer eating the grasshopper, there'll be more frogs and they might eat more grasshopper. So there's a number of ways that you can explain and, um, and answer these questions. So don't feel overwhelmed by them. Don't worry about your answer being correct or incorrect. Normally they'll be correct as long as you explain them well enough. Okay, and there's quite a number of those examples in the homework and in, in the PowerPoints to use. Okay, the last point in this topic is a couple further definitions. Now, 
This one is one that you'll hear mispronounced on most American TV shows. This word is not pronounced niche, it is pronounced niche, like quiche, okay? So a niche is a very straightforward definition. It's the role an organism plays in its community. Okay, so it's the, the, what an organism essentially does in its community. Now you might be given examples like um, the one I'm going to in fact show you. Right, so a rabbit. A rabbit's a herbivore. Um, it, can, it might be in this example it's active at night, it might be it's active during the day, it doesn't really matter which. It competes with deer and it competes with cows and it's a prey for the stoat. All the description of what that rabbit does on a day-to-day -day basis and what it's fed um, on by and what it feeds on, all these things are describing what the point of that is in the community. Okay, for example, the niche of me is to be your teacher, to mark homeworks, to come home at night and make dinner, etc, etc. All these dull things that you do on a daily basis. What you do just as part of your community. Okay, so a niche is generally just a one marker question. Either it gives you some information and asks you to select that that is what's meant by the niche, or it'll ask you to select that it's a role of an organism. Okay, and the very last one is about competition. Now you'll have heard the term competition before and it basically occurs when organi um, organisms have a limited supply of resources. Okay, and they'll have to fight over them. They'll essentially have to compete with other organisms to have that resource. So if you're an animal, it may be food or water or mates or territory or space, etc, etc. If it's a plant, then it would be light or it would be water or it would be space and um, other things like that. Now there are two examples of competition, and these are interspecific and intraspecific. Now interspecific occurs between different species. So interspecific competition is competition between members of different species. For example, I've got here between foxes and badgers. They are two different species. And the reason that competition occurs is because they are having to compete for some of the same resources. Okay, so while foxes and badgers may need to compete for water, they won't need to compete for mates or the same place that they sleep. Okay, so they're competing for some or a few of the same resources. Okay, but they're not competing for all of the same resources. So if interspecific is between different species, intraspecific is competition that occurs between members of the same species. Now if you're a member of the same species, for example a red deer competing with another red deer, they would compete for all of the same resources, the same food, the same water, the same mates, the same space, the same habitat, the same territory, all these things are the same. And therefore because they're competing for exactly the same stuff, this competition is far more intense Okay, and you're much more likely to lose if you're in intraspecific competition if you're competing for the same things with the same organisms, okay, within the same species. So that kind of covers all the definitions you're going to need to know for ecosystems. A lot of it you'll have known before, okay, the main things that are new are these two types of competition and this term niche, and plus the descriptions of that removal of organisms and food webs. Okay, so go back over this video and then try the, um, the homeworks and see if you can practice some questions on this.